Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to your holy name, Father God. Father God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you for this day, for this is the day that you've made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, Almighty Yahuwah. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that you are our keeper, and without you, we cannot be kept. And Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We ask that you forgive us all sins, Father God, that we've committed, Father God, be there in word, in deed, or in thought. In the name of Jesus, we pray for clean hands and pure hearts, and we ask, Father, that you would restore in us, renew in us a right and steadfast spirit, O oh God, an unshakable and unmovable spirit, one that will walk circumspectly in your sight, Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray, Father God, that you continue to speak to us tonight, revealing yourself in your word, oh God, and revealing your, us as your people, Father God, and who we are in you. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing, oh God, in our lives, collectively and individually, oh God. Thank you for your word, for it is life to us. And we thank you, oh God. Be glorified tonight, Father God, in and through us, oh God. Father God, I decrease, and Father God, I pray you increase. Teach us, oh God, by your Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So it's been a long day for me, guys, so just bear with me. It's been a long day. So last week, we completed chapter uh, 239. 39. Hallelujah. And we had that doppelganger in there. That's why I call it, you know, the um, we're the most high, you know, he... Uh, dealt with Hezekiah. But what I'm going to do tonight, just as a, to cover, uh, before we go into the questions, because we didn't get to do the questions uh, in chapter uh, 29 last week. Let's not put, I mean, 39 last week. Let me get my right Bible first. And I'm going to be using a New Living Translation. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start reading just to to kind of summarize what we ended in as it concerned Hezekiah, King Hezekiah. And it was in 2 Chronicles chapter 32. And we're going to read, uh, start at verse 24. Okay. And then we'll go into the questions. Okay. Amen. So, Second Chronicles, chapter 32, verse 24. And it reads, it says, about that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill, and he prayed to the Lord who healed him and gave him a miraculous sign. But, and we know what the miraculous sign was. Hezekiah asked that the sun go back, okay? Go back towards on, on the dial, okay? And it says, but Hezekiah did not respond appropriately to the kind to the kindness showed him and he became proud. So the Lord's anger came against him and against Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah humbled himself and repented of his pride as did the people of Jerusalem. So the Lord's anger did not fall on them during Hezekiah's lifetime. Hezekiah was very wealthy, wealthy and highly honored. He built special treasury buildings for uh, his silver, gold, precious stones, and spices, and for his shields and other valuable items. He also constructed many storehouses for his grain, new wine and olive oil, and he made many stalls for his cattle and pens and for his flocks of his sheep and goat. He built many towns and acquired vast flocks and herds, for God had given him great wealth. He blocked up the upper spring of Gion and brought the water down through a tunnel to the west side of the city of David. And so he succeeded in everything he did. However, when ambassadors arrived from Babylon to ask about the remarkable events that had taken place in the land, God withdrew from Hezekiah in order to test him and to see what was really in his heart. See, Hezekiah got puffed up and said, come in and look at all the great things I've done. Because see, they'd heard how deathly ill Hezekiah had been. They'd heard everything that had occurred. But when they came, 
Hezekiah brought no glory to God because the bottom line is it's never about us. It's always about the most high. He didn't say the most high when I was down and I was defeated. The most high delivered me in my time of sickness. When the army came against me, it was my God who stood up and delivered me. See, Hezekiah got puffed up because how God had greatly responded to his prayer for healing. Okay. See, and, and this is something else we can apply to our own lives. All the blessings that God gives us, no matter what they are, all glory goes back to God. It's not about us. It never is about us because we have to remember the whole purpose of Israel in as a people, as God's people, was to be able to show the glory of God to the other nations that they did serve the true and living God. Perfect time for him to bring all the glory to God, to the king of Babylon. But he did not. It was all about what him. Look at my great treasures. Are they not so great? No glory given to the most high God. Amen. Anybody want to respond on that? I mean, because we, gosh, so much good stuff coming right here that we can just live off of and eat if, as it concerns uh, Hezekiah. Anybody want to comment here before we go into the questions? Man, we see that just now today, you know, in our own lives. God truly does bless, you know, he heals us, he delivers us, he moves. These are our testimonies. It's never about me. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Eve. You just hit the nail on the head. I was just finna say that. And what came to my spirit was we should never uh, go through life or even a day without a testimony. That means that all the glory from our waking up in the morning to our arriving safely from food on our table to whatever, all of that belongs to him. That's giving him glory. So I, I this is me. I would say that neither one of us, none of us should... Um, uh, uh, go through life and not have a testimony. It just brought me to the remembrance of, you know how sometimes um, you know, even where we, we assemble at, do anybody have a testimony? It's like we are freeze up because you're trying to think of some miraculously or supernaturally that the most high has done. But just for me to wake up in the morning, Amen. that's a testimony right there. Just for me Amen. to have a job or to have food, those are testimonies because we be want to do something that's Ooh, God blessed me with this. He blessed me with that. But what did he do for you that you can just say, Father, I just thank you for another day. That's a testimony. Amen. So I just want to say that that is very much so correct. Amen. 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 Anybody else want to respond? No? Well, we're going to go on to the questions uh, in starting in chapter 39. And, and the first question is, I know everybody studied. And by the way, if there's anyone here who has not had an opportunity to get the questions, you can find them on our web church website. And if you click on the, the, um, uh, the Bible study link, you'll see where it shows the old um, chapters, um, like 16 to 35. And if you put your mouse over that, you'll see a pop-up, a hyperlink pop-up pop-up for chapters 36 through 66, you just click it and then it'll, it'll, it'll fall down. You can just print it from there. Okay. So the questions are located on the website. So now that everybody has studied it and, and they, they, they're ready to go. So question number one is who came to visit Hezekiah after he recovered from sickness? And we just spoke on it. So don't everybody raise their hand at one time. <laughs> I'm looking for a hand. I see some lips. You, what Hit the little thing so I can see the little red hand because I, I have to see the little red hand or whatever that little hand pops. There you go. Who is that? Was that you, Pastor Dave? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Isaiah came to see him. 
Yes. And um, after he recovered from his sickness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. I, but um, who, who else came to see him? To visit. Wanted to check on him, see, because he heard how sick he had been and his recovery. Oh, that was the king of Babylon. Absolutely. Initially. And then absolutely. Yeah, came later. And I then think, you know, Isaiah came. Things. That is correct. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Amen. Amen. And the second question was, what did Hezekiah show them? Sister Sophie, I'm sorry. What questions are we doing? I, for some reason, thought we were doing 39. We are. Our, okay, I must be looking at something wrong. Okay, sorry about that. Go ahead. Hmm. So, so you do, you have, did you print this already, Mo? I did. I had something different. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. That's okay. It says, so what did Hezekiah show them? He showed them everything. The armor, everything. the precious ointment, everything, the gold. He showed them the entire treasure that he had. Amen. Everything. Did no one find that odd except me? I thought it was very strange. <laughs> Did nobody find that odd? It was odd. I don't think he, I don't know. It's some sometimes when you start doing something, maybe he just got out of hand. Um, you know, and maybe like you said, with his pride, unfortunately, we all do that. And he may have said, Well, hey, look at this. And by the way, hey, have you seen that? Oh, and I got that. Oh yeah, and look at this that I have. So it yeah, that was very yeah, strange. Yeah. Nobody, like you said, I think even last week, no one really does that. Um, but um, I don't know. I think sometimes when we're in the moment and that pride, things can get out of hand. And then unfortunately, you catch what you did a little later. He's like, Dad, did I just do that? Mm, and maybe I'm okay. wrong. You know, but sometimes we do that, but it seemed like it was a progression. And sometimes it then I mean he was reading and say, Oh, look at all of this. Oh, look at this. And by the way, and he progressed on. Next thing you know, you know, showed the enemy everything. And everything. That was not his intention. I don't think that was intended to do. He wasn't a wise person. And he's presented himself beforehand. He was a wise person, but even the very wise can make mistakes at certain times. Well, he did, and he did, and we and we read that in in um in the Second Chronicles, because mm -hmm. God withdrew exactly. from him to test his heart, what was really in his heart, and it was pride. He was puffed up, and he was like, "Look at my big cars, my fifteen cars." We see, guys, you know, we see the basketball players, and and it's not just them. You know, we see people they do this, yes. but he did repent, but it still cost him because he lost the kingdom. Well, not during his lifetime, but his sons. Yes. See, his sons were going to captivity. Matter of fact, his line would be cut off because his sons would become eunuchs. Yes. And oh. I was saying that in comparison, like, look at Solomon. Yeah. He started out well. And then as things progressed, he things got out of hand. I don't think he started out. And in our lives, too, sometimes you see a person that error. They didn't start it out meaning to do that. But mm. sometimes you get down that road and next thing you know, your flesh that pride it can lead you in the areas you'd be like wow i don't even believe i did that yeah you know? and solomon to me is a great example amen amen but i think this is also to a very good example for us it's one of those things we really have to guard our heart against because it's really you know we think like whoa wow man how did it's it, it's one of them things that it can easily happen and before you know what you don't went down the slippery slope <laughs> Sister, Sylvia. Sister Sylvia. Yes. I just want to say something here. And, and I see what Mo is telling. What you do, we in chapter 38, you you ask question for uh, number six, but you tell us to go to 39, one, but on the, on the outline. But on the outline, you just ask for question six and seven on our outline now. So we are doing six and seven now. That's what we got. And then you got chapter 39. But on um, question six, Eva, not chapter I'm, 39. I'm, okay, I have to look at it after because right now when you're telling me I'm totally not following you. Okay. So I saying. have to look at that at, at a later date. Okay. Because right now what I'm looking at is 39. Two, I'm looking at number two and um, sec, at chapter verses... Uh, well, chapter 39, just kind of make sure everybody, 
chapter, it says the book of Isaiah chapter 39. Okay. Okay. We just did the first question. No. And it's, and I'm, I gave you the actual verse. Third, it said, I mean, the actual verse where the uh, answer can be found to the question was in 39.1. I, um, sister, uh, uh, sister Sylvia, um, I think what happened was you must have rewrote this second part and actually put it where it actually belongs. But what we have here, all of us, is that at the end of 38, in the book for chapter 38, you have seven questions. Your sixth yeah. and seventh question is actually belonging to the book of 39. Um, so in 39, right now, for all of okay, us. Okay, hold on. Let me let me let me get to where you're talking. Okay, so 37. I see chapter 37, 37, 37, and 37, um, 37. Book of Isaiah 38, 38, 38, 38. And then we're down here in 39. How, how many questions do you have in the book of Isaiah for 38? Well, I have five. Right, but in hours that we're looking for, the one you just showed us online, you just told us to go to online, there's actually seven questions. But really? the last I'll go back and I'll check that. Right. I'll the last two and... questions actually goes to 39. But it's okay. Oh, okay. You Let's stop right here. Let's stop right here. So what we're going to do is go to, well, right now in 39, how many right. questions do you have? If, if you just continue right now at the rate we're going, we can do all four questions that you have in 39. Okay, well, let's just finish 39. Yes, it's yeah, funny. We should have caught 38 last week. I didn't, I'll go back and I'll look at those. But since we're done in 38 and we're in 39, right? Yeah, let's just continue 39. Amen. Uh, Thank you, guys. Though I'll go back and look at that. So let me ask this question that I just read. We read, uh, we're in 39. The second question was, what did Hezekiah show them? Are you all following with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that's found in verse two. And Pastor Dave just answered that question. Okay. So now the third question is, what did Isaiah tell Hezekiah what happened as a result of what he just did in the previous question? Everybody got that one? Yes. Okay. Anybody want to answer it? He um, said, hear the words of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all of your house and what your fathers had accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Absolutely. Nothing shall be left. Nothing the... shall be left. Yes. <clears throat> Amen. That's correct. That is correct. And, you know, and as I look at that, you have to uh, go back to the uh, first verse uh, with that because this guy was a king and he was showing the king and, and, it, and I guess they felt equivalent. So you're showing someone a uh, that is equivalent with you all that you had so that pride right there so the Lord responds to him is all that you had will, all will be taken away oh wow that's good yes <laughs> yes absolutely he showed it was everything that he had. And because of his pride, it was all about him. Let me show you. And, 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 Most High just, and we read that in Chronicles. We said the Most High withdrew for him just to see what was in his heart, how he would respond. And he lost everything. Everything that he showed is everything he lost and including a little bit more because he's losing. He's going to lose his sons. He's going to lose his seed. Exactly. Yes, Sister Sylvia. The uh, the other thing that you can actually see is um two things. 
Uh, pass, to, to piggyback off of what Pastor Dave had said earlier, you know, sometimes, you know, you're trying to be boastful for your friends, but these guys weren't even friends. They were just, you know, the other side of, you know how you have new people come around sometimes that don't know much about you. And so you mm-hmm. try to put on this big front and this big show. Oh, like wow. yes. you have so much because these people don't know. This is, you're talking about the world. And then this is supposed to be people that are connected with God. You, you, you know, Hezekiah was part of, you know, the kingdom of Judah or Jerusalem. Do you understand? And this okay. is the world. This is the Assyrian, the Babylonians coming to him, you know, just to see. And so it's kind of like, you know, if you bring it to today, it's kind of like you standing out in the world and you're being boastful of what you think you got when you actually have nothing. But yeah, and nothing in comparison to what the world, what does light have to do with darkness? Right. And yet you standing in a dark world trying to show them the light when there is none. And it kind of like, see, it, it's kind of like what James just said. And I, I pray that I, I said it, it, that makes a lot of, that makes sense where God took it away from him because he, it, it, it wasn't for his, for him to do. And it wasn't his to show. Just like when we started out, you said, and we all know that nothing, none of this belongs to us. It is all him. So regardless to who or what we're showing, it all should be the light of his glory, not ours. We have none. Amen. That is so true. But that's what happened, you know, when new people come around and you're trying to be boastful. (laughs) impressed yes that's how jen said impressed yeah trying to impress especially someone in the world i mean why anyway it's just prideful and being puffed up you know it, it, it's a scary line to me to walk i mean is it to because just as quickly as the most high bless you he can take it away from you and a lot of people you know don't nothing we have or acquire no matter what it is the blessings of our children the blessings of any uh, anything god gives us it don't come fr- it's not from us or by us or because of anything we've done it's be the blessings of god how he chooses to bless us but you know i was going but looking back here in second chronicles and in um 32, 24. And of course, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And I just was looking at it again. And it says, about the time Hezekiah became deathly ill, he prayed. But in verse 25, it says, but Hezekiah did not respond appropriately to the kindness shown him. And he became proud. He didn't respond the way he should have to the blessing of the most high. Cause he, he, he was so puffed up about he had did this prayer and God responded so awesomely towards it. So as I said earlier too, you know, it's really about giving God the glory. It's always been about that. I, you know, even I've heard elder Stanley teach this a lot. You know, it's always about God. It's always about bringing him the glory. The whole thing was about Israel and Judah was always to show the other nations around them who the true and living God was. Great opportunity for Hezekiah with the king of Babylon. This actually was a great opportunity. I was deathly sick, but I prayed to the most high God. Not on, he didn't make the time on the clock go forward, but he made it go backwards for me. This is what my God did. I mean, you know what I'm saying? He made the sun go back. It wouldn't have been just on Israel. Like these people, like, y'all know the sun went back. Something happened. That's right. Just think about what God did for him. He made the sun go backwards. On the time go backwards on the clock. So, I mean, this is not, everybody see this, is seeing this time change. But this would have been the perfect time for him to bring glory to God, but he didn't do that. It was all, these are all the great things that I've acquired. Not only did the Most High raise me up from my bed of affliction, because it said the, the, the King of Babylon had heard that he had been gravely ill. They, had, they knew about all of this. And it's funny to me because it was like they probably was getting prepped already to roll in. 
since uh, <laughs> they saw a Siri didn't finish the job, but they saw that he was raised up. And not only that, God had brought back the, had truly blessed him. I mean, God continued to bless Hezekiah. Because remember, if we remember when we uh, read uh, previously, actually Hezekiah had given the king of Assyria all his treasures. He even stripped the gold from the um, temple doors. Even everything that was in the temple, he'd given them everything. But we don't see that here, but for some kind of way, all the treasure is given back to him. God is a restorer. So we see, and you know, we read earlier where it says, God said, not only do you have to worry about what you're going to eat, he said, because you're going to eat this year from what comes up on its own. And then next year, you're going to eat what come up from that. And we got to understand because when Syria comes in and they're destroying the cities, on their way to Jerusalem, they get they taking this, everything. They destroying crops. We got we if we could just kind of like think on these old movies that we see. They take they destroying everything, but God restoring everything to Hezekiah. But Hezekiah don't give God no glory. No glory. Everybody still there? <laughs> Everybody's quiet. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Everybody's quiet. Anybody want to comment on there or do I'm going to move on to the next question? So a, somebody got their hand up, Sister Sylvia. I think okay, it's okay. Go ahead. It's like Hezekiah got amnesia. Okay. Like just that quick. Like, yeah. okay, he asked the Lord to, to uh, heal him, but then he turned around and he forgot. Uh, wait. Okay. I, I don't know. He just got amnesia. Amen. Amen. And it just became all about him. That's what you yeah. say. He just got puffed up and it was all about him. And look at me, this great king of Babylon. He's coming to see me, but let me show you. Because it was a test. God tested him. It clearly says mm -hmm. it was a test. God was testing him. And a lot of times we, we're being tested sometimes and we don't even realize it. Amen. Mm -hmm. So let's go to this. Um, Dave has his hand up. Pastor Dave. Yeah, but for you, I, I just want to comment. And I and we was reading that earlier. I, I kind of saw that. It's really sometime with God and he tested him. It's not the what or how we do stuff, but sometimes it's the why. You know, he he searches intent of the heart. And here, you know, you see this king and like Elder Jones, Pastor Jones said, you know, you got this king of Babylon and he's, I'm surely now I'm going to say not from God, but he's blessed, you know, and here the man of God want to show, okay, you got that, you know, and God, this scripture about, you know, don't envy those in the world, you know, but here there was some envy here, you know, you got this, let me show you what, but he that why intent of the heart thing. God don't mind us, like we said, like God don't mind us prospering, but he wants to receive the glory. And like Amen. he has this wonderful opportunity that God blessed him after he gave everything away, God blessed him back. Now he had this wonderful opportunity to, to share what God did for him. Absolutely. Heart, like somebody said that, look, I think uh, Sister, uh, Parisa said that amnesia kicked in and we all may do that, you know, yeah. not to lay hard on him, but, you know, because here this king, you know, this person in the world saying, oh, well, look at me, I'm ba Babylonian king and here I am. I want to show off God's glory, but mm -hmm. he forgot. He did not give the glory to God, that intent That's of the heart, right. which is there a good you thing. Go. You know, God there will do go. that to us. He would test intent our heart when that thing come out, but it's for our good. He yeah. wants us to see ourselves so we can make corrections. But I agree with that so much because here is a wonderful opportunity to him to say, look, you know, not who, OK, who healed me? Let me tell you who, about who healed me. Let me tell you who restored the king that the, the way he is. Let me show you the glory of God. And that glory God would not share, as you Amen. said, Pastor Stan would met. So yes. God kind of shared glory. OK, if you're the That's king. That's right. Know, so he had to be brought down. But, you know, God don't mind us being blessed. But, you know, our intent, that heart thing. And I was thinking about it. I don't know why it may not relate to you, but even when like when Peter, 
you know, remember, you know, when Peter, Paul had to come and correct Peter. He got with the Jewish leaders. Now he was just with the apostles and God just saying, hey, hey, hey forget about this old law, this old covenant, the new, you're cleansed only by faith. But he get with his boys, these Jewish leaders. And all of a sudden, you know, Paul had to come in because now he's trying to impress back on these people who are free now, Jewish, you know, so that he wasn't totally free yet. Or he had influence from the world, you know, which in that case were the Jewish leaders. But sometimes things in the world, it can influence us. Amen. And Amen. our greater influence got to come from God. It can't, can't from a man. But sometimes, you know, all of us probably been there. There's people and things in the world that can influence us. Yes. Yes. But that pride is a terrible, terrible thing. Oh, yes. That being puffed up and being prideful is a terrible thing and want to be seen. Want to be seen and heard, you know, like, look at me, look at me. But no, it, it's all about the glory going to God and the blessings that we have, anything we have, all every good thing is from the most high. So the, un, ultimately, that's who the honor goes to. It goes back to him. Okay. Amen. Okay, sister, if I see your hand up, and after that, we're gonna do this last question. Okay, I just wanted to say, God, uh, when you was reading that scripture there out of the, I think you had the Amplified or the NIV or whatever. He said, you said read that way. Uh, um, Hezekiah did not respond properly. Yes. It's okay, so it, it started me to thinking. When we don't respond properly and giving the most high the glory, which he all of it deserves, that means that there's something there causing us not for us to respond properly. It could be like Sister Lawrence said, that amnesia, or it could be also be that pride, because pride will come in and cause us not to respond properly because we want the glory. We want that self-exaltation. We want this. We everything become like what like I. I will. I will. I did. It's mine. Whatever. Everything is selfish. That's I. That's pride. So with him not responding properly, you can see it right there that pride was already there. Because he did not give the most high all the glory of what he had. Amen. Amen. So the last question here we got, it says, what good did Hezekiah see in Isaiah's prophecy? What, what was the, what, how, how did Isaiah see it as, what part of it was good to him? That he was not going to be, <laughs> that he was going to have peace during his time. He wasn't going Absolutely. To during his time. Ain't that terrible? Crazy. It is. Yeah. Terrible. Didn't care about his children. Nope. Like, okay, long as I, it's going to be peace through my, oh, during my time, I'm good. Man, can you imagine that? And it, it is, a, it <laughs> is really very sad. But the most I said, his whole, all of Israel would uh, Judah be they're going to go into captivity into in, into Babylon. That very nation is going to be the nation that take them into captivity, and his sons will become eunuchs. Isn't that terrible? We're like, Oof, well, long as out is that not going to happen while I'm sitting on the throne? On oh, my watch, I got fifteen years. <laughs> That's like I said, I got fifteen years. Okay, very sad to me. Wow, it is, man. Wow, very sad to me. Okay, guys, so we're gonna move into um, yeah, we're gonna move into chapter forty. And my notes are falling apart. My gosh, no, yeah, chapter forty. Okay, amen. A lot of meat there in uh, dealing with Hezekiah. So we, in chapter 40, we're looking at it. And, and, and as I was reading this, a portion of this, I see how God going to comfort his people. And at the same time, you know, how God, how great our God is, the true and living God, the God we serve. Amen. So we start in, um, like I said, I'm reading the New Living Translation. And we're going to start in. Uh, chapter 40 at verse one. And I got, we're going to do Bible. It's going to be a lot of 
if you want to take your notes, because I have a lot of um, a, a additional scriptures with these, supporting scriptures. Now, in 40 verse 1, it says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and tell her, and tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. So now Isaiah is prophesying and he's saying a, a future event, another, he's talking future again, another prophetic word he's bringing forth here. So uh, let's go to second Corinthians, second Corinthians one, three through four. And it reads, it says, Chapter one, three through four, and it reads, all praise to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Amen. Verse three says, listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord, make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Matthew three, you all can follow me or you can just write these down, but Matthew chapter three. Let's see, Matthew three. One through three, and it reads, it says, in those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching. His message was, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, he is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. Amen. Amen. Verse four, fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills, straighten the curves. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. Luke three, Luke chapter three. Verses five, starting at verse five. And it reads, the valley will be filled and the mountains and hills made level. The curves will be straightened and the rough places made smooth. And then all people will see the salvation sent from God. So right here we see where Isaiah is, is bringing comfort to, to, to the people of both Israel and Judah. And he's speaking comfort to them. Yet the comforter is... Uh, uh, he's something that will be coming in the future. So we see this is a prophetic word, a future word, as it concerns the Messiah, the deliverer that would come. Amen. Verse seven. Uh, I'm sorry, verse six. And it reads, a voice said, shout. I asked, what should I shout? Shout that people are like the grass, their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord. And so it is with his people. Let's go to, let me see, I think I had for this one. Oh, let's put that back. Let's see, first. Yeah, first Peter. First Peter chapter one, verse 23. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. As the scriptures say, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass, the grass withers 
and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord remains forever. Amen. Amen. Verse eight. I think I just read that. It says the grass wither and the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. Verse nine. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountaintops. Shout it louder, O Jerusalem. Shout and do not be afraid and tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Okay. Verse 10. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. 4010. Let's go to Revelation 22. Or well, you can write that down if you wish. Revelation 22. Verse 12. And it reads. 22 verse 12, Revelation 22 verse 12 reads, look, I'm coming soon, bring them my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I'm the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Oh, I just want to read this part because it looks good. Verse 14. <laughs> It says, blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. Amen. I just thought that just sounded good. Praise God. That's the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 11. It says he will, um, back in Isaiah, verse 11, he will feed his flock like a shepherd and he will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. And let's see, I think it's Ezekiel. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 34. Oh, starting at verse 11, 11, yeah, 11 to, and it reads, it says, for this is what the sovereign Lord says, I myself will search and find my sheep. I will be like a shepherd looking for his scattered flock. I will find my sheep and rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on that dark and cloudy day. And we remember that dark and cloudy day or that dark and terrible or that dark day of the Lord. Remember we read of that earlier in Isaiah. Amen. <clears throat> he says, I will bring them back home to their own land of Israel from among the peoples and the nations. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel and by the rivers in all the places where people live. Amen. Amen. So we just read in this portion here where the most high, where Isaiah is prophesying the, 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 the deliverer who will come, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So again, we read, you know, as we spoke earlier in the previous chapters that we talk about, and um uh, <laughs> They always knew about the they always knew of the Messiah. It had always been prophesied. It had been prophesied since Isaiah that the Messiah would come. He was coming, the deliverer, the true deliverer. Amen. So even when we we read about it, even all we even looked at it um, portion of it as we just read in um, Ezekiel, a Messiah is coming who would deliver. However, we remember when we read in Luke, it says they didn't recognize him when he came. And, you know, uh, um, uh, Elder Jones taught, was teaching Sunday, you know, even um, the woman at the well, she said, are, she still had to ask, are you? Now, she knew the word, hallelujah, she knew, okay? She, she, she knew the word because they, they'd heard the word. 
Okay. Not only that, like he said, they were mixed. They were Israel. And we, and if you remember that we've read about that earlier, how Samaria would, that was one of the first thing we read, how Samaria would be dispersed and go into captivity. Okay. So now, and we have to remember this as well. Jesus states he only came for the lost sheep of Israel. That's all he was ministering to. This is who he was ministering to at the time. Okay. It was not until the disciples went out primarily Paul who ministered to the um, Gentiles. He clearly said, this is what he, this is the word right here. He said, I came but unto the lost sheep of Israel. And remember when the woman even came to him and was asking about healing her uh, child, he said, uh, he, what he said, I, I don't, um, the woman said, even the dog get the crumbs, you know, they get the crumbs, at least they fall from the table. Okay. He was only there for, he came for, to minister to Judah, he, the, the, the deliverer had come. And if he weep, he wept about it because he said, I can't, and they don't, they don't even recognize me. I'm here and they do not recognize me. And because of that, they went into captivity again. Amen. Keep up with my time here. Amen. So let's see where we stop at. Let's see. Okay. We're going to go uh, at verse 12. Yeah. Oh gosh. It's already 1047. Let's read. Um, Verse 12. Let's see, chapter 40. Okay. Excuse, excuse me, you guys. I just had a station. I did occasion break for a minute. Okay. Verse 12. And it reads, the... <coughs> Who else has held the oceans in his hand? Who's measured off the heavens with his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed the mountains and hills on a scale? Hmm. Who's able to advise the spirit of the Lord? Who knows enough to give him advice or to teach him? Has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good? Did someone teach him what is right or show him the path of justice? So let me stop right here. And we're going to read. I want to go to Isaiah. Kind of go ahead a little bit here. Isaiah. Let's see, 12. Isaiah 48, Isaiah 48, 13 reads, listen, Isaiah 48, 13, and it says, it was my hand that laid the foundations of the earth, my right hand that spread out the heavens above. When I call out the stars, they all appear in order. Okay, <laughs> hallelujah, our God is God. Our God is God. He's a true and living God. He's an everlasting God. He's a creator of all things. You know what? I think the biggest thing uh, with a lot of um, just how we deal with things and even recognizing just before we can even recognize who we are, we got to recognize who God is. If we truly get an understanding of who God is, how great he is, how powerful our God is, I mean, well, if we could truly get the revelation of who God is, then we could recognize who we are in him. Our God is God. 
<laughs> I mean, if we could just get the revelation. And I think that's part of the problem. We really don't know God and who he is. He is a creator of heaven and earth of all things. And he is our God. He chose us. He said, whoever mess with his people mess with the apple of his eye. This is his word. I mean, if we could just get the revelation, that's why God has a problem when we have issues with one another. Because if I mess with Pastor Dave, I'm messing with God. So I'm stepping on my own toes. Pastor Ed, I mean, Pastor Dave, I see your hand. And I like the way you said that, but I think one of the, you just said, if we could just truly get the revelation of who, of who God is. That I think one of the biggest problem is we try to do that with our human intellect and we get a revel. We think we have a revelation of who God is. We don't know that unless God reveals himself, how great he is. And he does that by the Holy spirit. And I think that's one of our greatest problems. I mean, as Christians, we all, we just read that. I mean, it sounds good. You know, he measured it. He know, the weight of the earth and all this, but to get really get the understanding of that, you can't get it without the Holy Spirit. You because can. you can only get man's, our intellect can't perceive that. What you just said, if I didn't have the Holy Spirit, that's foreign. It don't even make any sense. You know, first it's of amazing. all, about measuring the earth, weighing the earth, measuring the seas and all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> that, that's foolishness. To, and, and I understand what the word said. That's foolishness to man. The word is foolish to a man, but without the Holy Spirit, it's foolishness even to us as you want to say Christian believers. But when we listen to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit reveals that and we get that inner revelation, then it helps us to understand because without that, what you just said, okay, if I mess with you, I'm messing with God. As a Christian, okay, I'm just messing with you. You're just another saint. I mean, who are you? You know, I got more than you. I mean, come on. As a matter of fact, God, just, I've been saved longer than you. I mean, I'm just saying I haven't, but I'm just saying that's what Christian would say. So, you know, I'm so-and-so. So with that, revel the Holy Spirit making us one, and we said, you know, the Jones preached on that, you know, there's one God, one spirit, one baptism, one God in us all working through us all, you know, and then Ephesians talking about we're all one, but we're separable, one supplying the joint of another. That's spiritual. You know, you can't perceive that in your natural self. And I think as Christians, we got to be careful. You know, all this stuff sounds good, but without the Holy Spirit bringing that true revelation of who God is and it, who we are, and as in, you can't perceive that. Okay, and I okay, okay. Get off of that. I mean, and I don't mean to cut you off because I got a question oh, yeah. for you now. But don't we all have a Holy Ghost? <laughs> yes, and I, I'm not going to use that word, but but are we listening? To the Holy Spirit. Now we're allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us and bring that revelation. We have it, but the word of God said we quench it. You know, I can have the Holy Ghost, but am I am I obedient or subject to the Holy Ghost? Does it mean so when the Holy Ghost tell me to treat you as an equal or to lift you up better than myself? I have an opportunity. I can be obedient to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, or I can be, I can quench it. And act like I don't know. Okay, 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 okay. Because here's the thing. We cannot even get to the part about loving our br brother and sister as ourself until we can truly get the revelation of God and how Amen. great he is Amen. through Christ Jesus. We cannot. So when I hear these words, I'm amazed that he know the stars. He said he, he put them there and he, he how he put the stars there where they're supposed to be and he knows where they are he's put he, he, he the expanse of the ocean it doesn't the waters don't go far be, uh, no further than they're supposed to go i mean just listening to he, no one was before him no one after him he is the true and living god i'm saying our god is not those gods they was making with sticks and woods and stone and this is the revelation that he was trying to get them to understand he said look i am god he said and you can't make no image of me 
I'm the true and living God who made all things. I hold you in the palm of my hand. Look, Elder John preached that thing Sunday. Now, listen, and he was talking about the, you know, yeah, the one baptism and the one, the Holy Ghost. And I understand it. But now we're all, when we are baptized, we're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because I remember even before not getting that full understanding. And, and then when, I got when when uh, pa Elder uh, Pastor Jones was Elder Jones was preaching it. I'm like, okay, praise God. Now listen, when like he said, when John baptized, he baptized unto repentance because Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet. He hadn't been elevated yet. He'd not gone to heaven yet because Jesus said, I had to go so that I can send the Comforter. So now that everyone who's getting baptized now. You're going to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. The whole you when you're baptized now, you you're you you receive the Holy Ghost. Cuz see, remember, I remember when we was back there in them days, there's like you can't speak in tongues cuz you don't have the Holy Ghost. That is not right. When John was baptizing, like Elder Jones was preaching, they only were baptized unto repentance because, like I said, Jesus had not gone, he had not ascended yet. So the comforter had not come yet. The Holy Ghost hadn't come yet. So now everyone who's being baptized, now we're being baptized what unto salvation. Righteousness. Okay, so now we got the Holy Ghost. So now let's pick it up. Like I said, I think until we get how great God is. See, because, oh God, if we just could just understand how great God is. I know I'm going to be on my time. I'm sorry, y'all, God. But if I think once we really recognize how good God is and when we hear the word, because he's what his word say, he said we perish for lack of knowledge. Because if we don't know a lot, if we don't know what's here, we can't even begin to think on to do it. So many, we're perishing because we don't know we're doing things that we're not supposed to be doing because we know we, we don't know we shouldn't be doing this. The word said, love my, love your sister and your brother, we're one. You're one, we're one, we're one, okay? So to, like I said, so to, I got the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost. Everybody sitting here, probably I like, know if you've been you said except Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you've been baptized. You got the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Spirit. So now we need to learn and we need to read and we need to study our word. That's what we need to do. And we need to understand who God is so we can understand who we are. Amen. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, is that you, Pastor Day? Yeah. I, yeah. God knows where am I? Yeah, I want to say it, it, you said that. So the Holy Spirit, we all receive. And and I love that because the Holy Spirit is it help, it's our comforter. You know, it's our guarantee. It helps us in our infirmities. One infirmity we have, the Bible speaks that we're short-sighted. And we we can see God in our sight or vision, perceive him the way we want. Even as a Christian, Holy Spirit helps us to see God as he is from God's point of view, who he is. So I can read this and I can say, oh, I think I have a perception of who God is. And then the Holy Spirit, as I humble myself, it the Holy Spirit, my infirmity is I can't see. So it now reveals to me us who God really is from God's point of view, not my point of view. Amen. Not your point of view, who how God sees himself, how God sees you, and how God sees me. And it gives us that vision, that sight of God, not our vision, our sight, our perception, but God's viewpoint. You Amen. know, and, and that's what I think to me, and I'm speaking to myself, what that's what the Holy Spirit does to me. You know, I know who. I think I know who my fellow Christians, but when God shows me who people around me really are, it broadened my and, and deepened my respect of who each and every one of you are, how I talk to you, you know, and that's why I think you see Christian, they feel with the Holy Spirit, but they mean to each other. They're not, they don't have that. And the Bible speaks to that, how you quench the Holy Spirit because you show no love, how mm -hmm. you treat one another. 
Yes. So if we would, you know, yield and be obedient to the Holy Spirit, to the, absolutely, to absolutely. We can be Christians. We can be. Um, I, I don't want to say hard-hearted, but you know, we can sometimes be kind of hard. And um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I'll, you know, kind of stiff neck. I don't know, but you know, stubborn. Thank you. We can be stubborn, you know. So I just, and I'm, I'm speaking to myself, probably not no one else, but you know, when God give me insight, you know, He could continue to do that. I'm working out this soul salvation, but there's a process, you know, of faith going from faith to faith, glory to glory. But that only happens as I submit myself to God through His Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit is there to help me to see what God sees in everything Amen. because God's going to see truth. I may not see the truth in God. I may not need to see the truth in you as believer, but God helped me to see truth. And I'm, I like, because everything, most of the thing that we created around here, it's not reality, you know, but God helps me see the truth in the world. Help me see the truth in one another. Help me see the truth in God. Without that, I'm a Christian walking around. You see people do that every day. I'm not living the life. I'm not free. Because I'm not submitting. I'm not allowing the Holy Spirit to give me that vision and that insight, that revelation. So it, we can be Christians filled with the Holy Spirit, but until we submit, we can be ignorant. Amen. Submit. Amen. Submitting. Oh, we don't like that word. <laughs> I always say that's the Christian cuss word, that Christian profanity. <laughs> submit. <laughs> Obey. No, we don't like that word. Praise God. Oh, man. What time is it, guys? Okay. We are at two minutes after the hour. So I'm going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to stop right here. And um, we'll probably, like I said, I hate these last not long enough. They said, but um, can we stop that verse? Mm, 14, I believe it was, not the nation of the world. Yeah, that, 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 14. But we'll probably back up just to recover that. And I'll look over those questions again, guys. And kind of, yeah, because um, I did change some of the questions because it, it, it didn't make sense. I didn't, I did change and I added and I took away, but it may, I may have got thrown off from my, um, my sheet. So I will go back and look at that. Um, hopefully that the next questions will, they'll be okay, but now we're going to keep moving on. Hallelujah. Jesus name. <laughs> it's going to be all right. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and close in. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. Amen. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, oh God. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for Jesus. Mm. Thank you for the Messiah. Thank you for the delivered. Thank you for restoring us back unto you, oh God. Thank you for reconciling us back to yourself, Father God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God, that the veil has been rent. Father God, we thank you, oh God. Mm, glory to your holy name, Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, for you sealed us, oh God. Thank you, Almighty God. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to be a fence of protection round about everyone that is here tonight, all their families, oh God, those who are members of Kingdom Covenant Ministries, oh God. We pray, Father God, that you will cover and keep them and their families, oh God. We ask that you continue to be a fence of protection round about us, protecting us and keeping us, lifting us up, least we should dash our feet against a stone, Almighty Yah, according to your word in Psalms 91. We ask that you will continue to encamp your angels round about us, Father God, that you will protect us and keep us. Father God, keep in our homes and you don't allow any disease or pests to come nigh us, nor the place we dwell, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, protect us, Father God, from what they're putting in our food, our water, O oh God, what they spray in the air, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, allow no weapon that may form against us to prosper against us, Father God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we pray that you keep us, Father God, because we can't be kept unless you keep us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we put our trust, our faith, our hope in you and you alone, oh God. Not man, not sticks, not stones, oh God, but you, Father God. And we thank you for keeping us. We thank you for keeping our children. We thank you for keeping our loved ones, our families, oh God. 
We give you all glory, Almighty God. We give you all honor. We give you all praise and continue to minister to us, Father God. Continue to speak to us through your word. Continue to speak to us as we depart individually, Father God. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.